Here's a simple way to stay connected on the go. Join KHQ on Facebook and Twitter and be a part of the conversation. Just like KHQ Local News on Facebook or follow us on Twitter before your next stop. Experience why more people follow KHQ Local News than any other station in the Inland Northwest. Be the first to know about breaking news, weather, and all the stories creating a social media swirl. Sign up, sound off, stay connected. KHQ Local News, right now. Welcome to Let's Talk Spokane, where host Ryan McNeese seeks out and discusses the latest on a variety of hot local topics. Now, here's your host, Ryan McNeese. Welcome to Let's Talk Spokane. I'm Ryan McNeese, and here in the studio with me are Larry Stevenson and Jennifer Ferrero from Toastmasters. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Let's, let's talk about Toastmasters. Uh, tell, us, tell us how each of you got involved in it. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and start. Um, so last year, I was working on an accreditation program in uh, for my work. And after I completed that process, I was still in a learning mode. And I found that I had become used to studying and learning and mm-hmm. preparing for a test. And so I sought out another opportunity. And I kind of looked into some different things. I looked into getting a master's degree. I looked into... Um, Dale Carnegie training and decided that wasn't exactly the route I wanted to go. And so I found Toastmasters out in Liberty Lake. And I found that that is a professional skills development club that worked for me. So I started attending meetings and I've been there about six months now. And how is it, you mentioned an interesting point, how is it different than the Carnegie program? Because you did mention that you'd taken Mm -hmm. a look at that as well? Well, for me, in reviewing the curriculum for Dale Carnegie, I found that some of the skills were more basic than what I was looking for. They were things that I felt that I had already mastered in my career. And when I started looking into Toastmasters, I found that it was a little bit more advanced in some ways, things like being able to memorize a speech, um, using body language to Hmm. talk, being timed in your speaking. So there's There are a number of things in Toastmasters that were of value to me. And maybe the next level. And for our listeners, I think it's important for them to know that, Jennifer, you own uh, Switch Up Consulting, a PR, public relations firm. So this skill obviously is hugely important to you, but also to your clients. So it makes sense. It, it absolutely does. And I've found in my career that I have more opportunities all the time to speak to groups. Sometimes it's a group of five people and their clients, and we're working through a public relations strategy. And sometimes it's a group of 100 people at an aerospace conference or something mm-hmm. that I'm doing for my job. And I found that I wanted to become more comfortable with different sizes of audiences and different types of talks. I think that's a good point, Jennifer. And I, I don't think there's a one of us that it's, it's that's not a, a skill that uh, that you have to just do over time. And I think Toastmasters, it sounds like, gives you that opportunity for repetition to become more comfortable. Larry, tell us how you got involved. Well, uh, many, many, many years ago. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds like a lot. (laughs) It is. Um, There was a lot of minis there. There is, and it's a good thing you can't see me because the gray hair would be terrible. (laughs) I originally started Toastmasters back in the 1970s. Okay. I was new into the business world and working in a funeral home and needed Hmm. to get out in front of people and was not good with that. I was still young and hadn't had a lot of experience so I started and then life events happened I got out of that and went into the Navy did a number of different things and had the opportunity once I'd gotten out to work for an organization uh, supporting foster parents and became part of their national speakers and and trainers bureau but I never had the skills that I really Mm. thought I wanted or needed so about three years ago I searched back into Toastmasters, and there's been some changes over time. But the program is enhanced, and I think the thing that I've I've really grasped onto is that it's not just about public speaking. Okay, and I think I think a lot of our listeners might think that exactly. I I think that's 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 the image when you hear Toastmasters uh, in a positive light, but you think public speaking. 
it's it's public speaking, and that scares people. Oh, for sure. And, and I'm never going to be able to do that. Think of your first speech in mm-hmm. high school. Mm-hmm. But this is more, than, Toastmasters is much more than just public speaking. Number one, there's a leadership section, a leadership track that enhances skills, focuses on doing different tasks to be able to develop those skills and enhance them and, and polish them. But the other thing, the communication side is all about communication. It doesn't matter if this is a communication just between two people Mm -hmm. or if it's a communication to a keynote speech of over a thousand. Toastmasters provides the skills to be able to do both. In in those diverse uh, situations. And I think you're right, Larry. Uh, uh, Like uh, Jennifer, you were mentioning as well, we've all had the opportunity to speak in front of uh, the larger group, I'll throw that out there at maybe, what, uh, 200 people or so. And it is, as Larry's saying, a different uh, type of engagement than one, two, ten folks in terms of what you're trying to communicate, how you're trying to communicate that. Uh, so I, I find that fascinating. And do you both feel like through your experience in Toastmasters, you've really hit on all of those uh, uh, skill sets and honed those? You know, there are so many skills that Mm -hmm. you pick up in Toastmasters, and it's not just, say, writing a speech Mm -hmm. or coming up with messages that you'd like to communicate. It's timeliness. It's showing up for the meetings on Mm. time because we do start on time. Right. It's being able to say a prayer potentially Mm -hmm. in front of a group or give the Pledge of Allegiance. Without just having massive sweat on your (laughs) (laughs) sweaty palm. And, and, you know, the nice thing about Toastmasters is that they ease you in. Yeah. You're not expected right away to get up and give a fantastic 10-minute memorized speech. You do come in and you have opportunity. It's a transition. It's a growing experience, it sounds like. It really is. It really is. And there's so many skills that you do pick up as a Toastmaster, and I'm learning every single week that I go. Well, let's face it. I think uh, what you're describing, and I know I would say in in my legal experience and being in trial and in court, uh, I mean, show me somebody that actually doesn't get nervous ever, and I think they're lying to you. Mm -hmm. And I think it sounds like that might be part of the learning experience in Toastmasters is the honesty, the sincerity that, hey, everybody in this group that's going through this process with you is saying, hey, I'm here to learn. Hey, I'm here to get better. And I know for me in terms of uh, courtroom experience, oh my gosh, I mean, anybody that says their heart's not about to come out of their chest, (laughs) those first experiences, uh, again, I just don't think it's being truthful. But it sounds like through your experience with Toastmasters, Uh, you've come a long way in becoming comfortable with those different engagements. Definitely for me. And the speaking part wasn't the difficult part Hmm. because I had been doing that. I'd I'd done some traveling doing that. Yeah, and your naval experience too. Exactly. You've done a lot of diverse things. A a number of different things, but it was the taking on of the other roles that helped build the leadership, Hmm. such as a speech evaluator. To be mm-hmm. able to look at the speech, not think about what the words that are being said and get caught up in the, in the story, but to actually focus in on the listening and hear what the objectives are and watch to see if they were met. Are you hitting those, met. checking those boxes? Exactly. And if somebody's one of the, one of the basic 10 speeches that the Toastmaster starts out with in, in what they call competent communication is how your body speaks. Hmm. Okay, I can talk with my hands. Doesn't mean that it's necessarily effective. <laughs> well, don't ask my kids about that because every time I'm seen in a picture, I'm talking with my hands and they say, Dad, stop <laughs> talking with your hands. So it's, noted. It's, it's one of those. <laughs> And it's, it's interesting, one of the things I learned from one of our very senior members is that you can, the way you position your body across the stage sets a timeline. Hmm. And you can actually travel through time and go back just by moving your body back and forth, which I didn't have a clue. Yeah, that's interesting. So I, I think the point you're making is a lot of psychology involved in all aspects of that communication, whether it be the use of your hands or your body. Uh, your gait on stage, uh, and then, of course, the ones that would be 
uh, that people would most likely think of, which is the tone of your voice or the cadence of your voice. Or uh, I find that probably as fascinating as anything. Uh, I watched the Obama farewell address last night, and just just whether it's Obama or whomever it is, somebody giving a lengthy speech like that to watch uh, their pausing their emphasis on a certain aspect of, as you said, Larry, the points they're actually trying to make uh, is fascinating. I think the psychology is fascinating. It absolutely is. And I know that in my career, I listen to a lot of speeches. I go to a lot of media type events where I am listening to Mm -hmm. people talk and I'm watching them talk and how they use their body language. And in fact, tonight, for tonight's talk, I am doing one on traveling around the world and the different body language that I've seen in different Mm. countries. And I'm hoping that I can pull it off. Give us a couple of examples of that. (laughs) Tell us a couple examples of that that you've seen around the world. So when I was traveling in, I went to the Middle East. I had an opportunity to go to Dubai. Hmm. And we went on a tour of a mosque, which was really fascinating. Just the very idea that we would be allowed into a mosque. And as we were getting ready to go in, they said, all women must have a head wrap Mm -hmm. on. You needed to wrap your head and your chest and not show, really, you you need to cover your skin in that country. So um, I had brought with me a scarf, a pashmina, and I did wrap it around and show and was prepared to go into the mosque. We had another lady, and I'll demonstrate this in the talk tonight, who brought a bath towel from the cruise ship. Oh, Just well, I should goodness. say a hand towel actually, and put it on her head and walked around with this hand towel on her head as if they might let her in. Yeah, well, she actually was excluded from the tour. I, that was going to kind of be my, my first guess mm-hmm. on that. Uh, that's, yeah, <laughs> that was not maybe her best choice there. <laughs> but, but like you're saying, around the, the world, uh, there are uh, different customs, different body languages that work, that don't work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it sounds like Toastmasters definitely gives you an a insight into what you can be successful with. Mm-hmm. Let's come right back after a short little break and talk more about Toastmasters. Great. Thanks. In touch. Online all the time. SpokaneTalksOnline.com. Snoring can disrupt marriages and cause serious health problems. Call Sleep Better Northwest first, the experts in dental sleep medicine. Their medically approved, custom-fit oral appliances will have both you and your partner sleeping better and being more productive throughout your day. Don't wait. Snoring and sleep apnea can signal potential strokes or heart attacks. For more information, visit needbettersleepnow.com and download our health guide today. Sleep Better Northwest, the experts in dental sleep medicine. Rob Curley editor of the Spokesman Review. We all just love the Zags. The traditional would be one reporter, maybe send a photographer, maybe send a columnist. Well, now on any given day, we'll have up to four reporters there, a columnist and two photographers. Uh, to me, when you have something that has the attention and, and love of a community, uh, overkill just tastes right. Online, in print, the Spokesman Review. Subscribe to the experience. Last year alone, Avista customers saved over 53 million kilowatt hours of energy. How? By cocking their windows, programming their thermostats, replacing their incandescent light bulbs with LEDs. Simple things, really. But the energy they saved was enough to power more than 4,000 homes for an entire year. Way to save, everyone. Way to save. Find your way to save at avistautilities.com. Welcome back to Let's Talk Spokane. I'm Ryan McNeese, and we're here in the studio with Larry Stevenson and Jennifer Ferrero from Toastmasters. And we've been talking about all things Toastmasters. And I think uh, one thing that we were chatting about during the break, actually, is the the diversity of rules and roles within uh, Toastmasters. Both Jennifer and Larry, tell us a little bit more about that. Well, part of the leadership track that we develop is using different skills such as listening or critical thinking or giving feedback. In order to do that, there's not enough speaking roles, formal speaking roles, in a typical meeting which usually lasts 
say an hour to an hour and a half. So we have other people filling various roles. We have a Toastmaster who is in charge of the meeting. We have a grammarian and awe counter. Grammarian to look for mm -hmm. those acceptable uses of the English language and those that might be a little on the border. And then the awe counter, because we all know when we have a pause and have something that we want to say but don't know how, we go, uh, oh, yeah. um, and we try to get over those. Yeah, I need practice on that as well. We do practice <laughs> on that. And it's interesting. We've, we've got members in our club that are 15, 20-year Toastmaster members hmm. that still struggle at times with looking at ahs and ums and, and looking what words they want to use. And, well, it's, and it's I, find that, I find that interesting that somebody would be taking the course for 15 years, but you both mentioned... Uh, clearly at the beginning of the show that, you know, the repetition in speaking engagements is, is how we all, in anything we do, become better or more acquainted or more relaxed at doing it. So I guess the 15 years makes some sense. It does. And the collaboration. I'm sure you're enjoying the folks that you're doing this process with. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it, it really does become like a family. And like I said, I've been in the club for about six months, and you really get to know everyone by their first names. You get to know their stories as mm -hmm. they give their talks. And something fun and interesting to people that maybe are a little bit afraid of public speaking is we actually do keep track of our ahs and ums during the meeting, and they have a little piggy bank they pass oh, around at goodness. the end, and you do pay in for those ahs and ums. And as it turns out, I am a frequent offender. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but we all, we know those folks. I think each of us could probably identify some folks in our circle that do a great job of not doing that. Mm -hmm. I can think of a, uh, a professor. There I did. I did a couple uhs right there as I was thinking of it. Mm -hmm. But Professor uh, Brooks Holland at uh, Gonzaga Law School does an amazing job of not having any of that. A very fluid speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's really impressive. So mm -hmm. it's certainly a skill that uh, someone would need to be trained significantly in. You know, I would love it if Larry shared a story of one of our members who recently just left and went back to China because she came into the group learning English and hmm. learning to speak the English language in front of people. So, oh Larry, goodness. if you'd love oh to share goodness. that. Oh, my goodness, and we thought we had it hard. <laughs> oh, it's, fortunately, I got to meet Ping Ping early in her journey through the three, little over three years she's been through Toastmasters. She was here on a research assignment from China. She was researching DNA and was cutting edge. She had English as a second language when she started Toastmasters and knew that she would have to develop her skills while she worked here. When she first came in, she didn't understand anything that we said. And by the time she left, and she just left this past October to go back home, she had presented yeah. at a international conference in New York and gave her farewell speech to all of us at the, uh, we had a, a dinner, like I say, it is a family. Right. We had a, a dinner and a potluck and she was able to share her goodbyes. And it was a, a tough night. Yeah. She, she held the, the audience in her hands. A lot of emotion there. Yeah. Very impressive. Uh, I mean, think of any of us being dropped into any number of countries around the world and say you need to give any type of introduction, speech, et cetera, in the, that respective language. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that makes me nervous just thinking about it. So, exactly. Uh, a colleague uh, in, in the legal industry here in Spokane a uh, good friend as well, actually started law school at Gonzaga and really didn't know English. And I, and when I think of that, I, I'm just mesmerized at the talent and concentration that would take mm -hmm. uh, to learn a new trade, to learn a new uh, whole body of uh, information in not your actual language. Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing. So. 
It is amazing, and I'll tell you, since I've been a Toastmaster, I do watch speeches like the mm-hmm. president giving his farewell talk and, and others, and I do count the ahs and ums now, yeah. sort of subconsciously. I'm yeah. not writing them down, but yeah. I notice these things in speeches well, that people they say, are giving. If you measure something, you will, <laughs> you will start looking at it. You will start focusing on it. What are, some of the, what are some of the tricks of the trade, if you will? I mean, what are... I mean, obviously, that's a very broad question when you're thinking Toastmasters. That's the whole course. But what are some things for the public speaker to be considering? Well, all something that Larry is teaching me that I very much appreciate is not to write out your full speech. Hmm. And he has said to me several times, he's thinking about the speech on the golf course or wherever he is. And I found that when I first started, I was writing the full speech and I was trying to read the full speech. Every word, every transition. Correct. Because I was afraid of failure. I was afraid that I wouldn't capture everything. Now, I I still have to say I take notes. That is a part of who I am. I'm a type A person, but I'm trying now to write out more guidelines or an outline for that speech before I get up and give my talk. And I'm also trying to practice a number of times before I get up and and talk. So that's helping me. Jennifer, I think that's a good point. I think preparation, number one, Mm -hmm. for any of us Mm -hmm. uh, certainly takes the anxiety away because you've, you've prepared. Uh, But again, good point that you're making that Larry's uh, teaching you right now is that concept of uh, if you're not writing out that whole speech, you're essentially subtitling or uh, you're allowing yourself in your own mind to fill in the blanks. And maybe that ends up being smoother in the long run. Is that is that the point? That is the point. And the, the nice thing about Toastmasters is while you may have a project or a, a goal for a t- specific speech, like Jennifer's tonight is her body speaks, to be able to use that. The body language? The body language. There is no mandate on what the subject is. Hmm. So at Toastmasters, take something you're an absolute expert at, because you can talk about that anywhere. Without writing down every semicolon, period, dash, et cetera. And then you can focus on Hmm. the skills that are a part of that. I don't remember the last time I actually wrote out a speech, but there's a a word or a couple of words that triggers my memory to give me something to say. Right. Now that makes sense, that something from that particular line or that paragraph that here's the subtopic that you want to elaborate on. And the people that come to our meetings, let's say you wanted to come, mm-hmm. never been there before, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to welcome you, yeah. and without a doubt, and we're going to have you sit close to somebody who doesn't have a real significant role, mm. so they can kind of give you an idea on what's happening throughout the meeting, because there's different times and different things that happen, and we always give the new person the opportunity to introduce themselves, just minimally, and then at the end, tell us what they thought about the meeting. Yeah, what was their observance? Their observance, and there's one other invitation we give to them. We all love to speak impromptu. There is nobody (laughs) who gets scared speaking impromptu. (laughs) And we actually have that during part of our meetings. It's a skill set. Yeah. And what happens is, is what we have is called table topics. There's a theme to the meeting. From that theme, we develop questions that nobody knows about until the table topics person comes up and says, Jennifer, and then reads a question. What do you think about And you've got the next minute to two minutes to respond. (laughs) We always give guests the opportunity. And it's amazing those that do how well they perform. Hmm. That and jump in and Just perform jump well. in and do it. And they do a tremendous job. So people have much better speaking skills than they give themselves credit for. Oh, I, th- I think you're making a good point. I think putting many of us in a situation where you're comfortable, mm-hmm. which it sounds like your meetings are a real mm-hmm. comfortable space amongst uh, friends and almost as a family, as you've indicated. Uh, but that impromptu sitting around the kitchen table – or sitting at the pizza parlor, most folks speak very well. It's probably that real uh, sincere nervousness of just a new situation or 
falling on my face, as they would say, or uh, I'm going to embarrass myself. But I think you're learning skills that you overcome that and get right down to the uh, specifics of what you're trying to communicate. And that's really the key. And that's where I find it so useful in my life. Because recently I was at a 50th birthday party for a friend of mine, and I gave a toast at the party. <laughs> now, I did think about the toast for a moment before I went ahead and said I'm giving a toast. And uh, after I gave the toast, I said everyone was clapping. They were so excited. They said that's that a was a sign. great toast. That's a good sign. And I said, well, I'm in Toastmasters. But that's just an introduction to what Toastmasters is, as you can see. That, see, that's a, that's a great selling point right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, body language. Mm-hmm. Jennifer speaking tonight. Body language is important. What's, what are you focusing on tonight? If you're thinking about it in preparation for tonight, what are you trying to accomplish with that? Well, there are objectives in the Competent Communicator book that I'm looking at, and I must achieve those objectives, and that's really what I need to do in order to complete this project that I've been assigned for tonight. And so I... Primarily, I like to make it interesting and fun, and I like to make sure that I deliver a great speech, but I must learn the objectives and and present those. That's just me and how I work. Larry is smiling at me. He may not not take it with that approach, but that's how I think about it. Well, uh, this has been very interesting for me because I think anybody, myself, as well as our listeners, probably have a perception of what Toastmasters might be or what it is. Uh, But you guys have done a very good job of illustrating uh, the real particulars of Toastmasters. If if folks would like to look into joining either your class or one that's potentially closer to them, where would they find information? Well, they can go to the uh, Toastmasters.org website. I believe it's a .org. Uh, and look for Find a Club, or they can look at our website, which is libertylakers.org, and we meet at the Liberty Lake Sewer and Water District on Wednesday nights, every so Wednesday. Once, once a week. Once a week, okay. uh, from 5.45 to 7 p.m., and people are welcome to come to our group or any of the number of Toastmasters groups that meet around town. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you both, Larry and Jennifer, here in the studio today. Thank you, and I hope you come back and chat with us again. Great. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot. Would enjoy it. Let's Talk Spokane is produced in Spokane, Washington by SpokaneTalksOnline.com, which is solely responsible for its content. Ask us a question, recommend a guest, and hear this program again online anytime at SpokaneTalksOnline.com. Thanks for listening. Some of our local veterans are at risk, and they deserve our support. Hello, my name is Michael Shaw, and I'm the Executive Director of the Guardians Foundation. Our Housing First program has housed hundreds of local homeless veterans and provides a safe, nurturing environment. But right now, your support is critical. Please text at 8888 or visit us online at theguardiansfoundation.org. Thank you very much. If you're like many shoppers, you love to find a deal online. Or you shop online because it's so convenient. And you probably know thieves love to go online too, to try to steal shoppers' credit card information. When you're shopping online, you can start protecting your credit card information by investigating the website you're shopping on. Make sure the online retailer lists a real phone number and a physical address. Read the site's privacy policy and search for reviews and ratings of the retailer. You can read more about safe shopping online at STCU's financial education blog. Go to stcumoney.org.